I was a very young man when I met Mel Fisher, not long after he had found the Atoja. We sat in his office that was covered in sand. I asked him if he had found all the treasure in the ocean. He laughed, picked up a handful of sand, and poured it on his desk. He separated a few grains, pointed to it, and said, Son, that is what I found. Then he pointed to the rest of the sand in his office and said, That is what's still out there. I then asked him what he would look for next. Without any hesitation, he said, The Nuestra Señora de la Maravilla. There are over three million shipwrecks on the ocean floor just waiting to be found. Nothing is truly ever lost at sea, only hidden by time and sand. When I put this fleet together, it wasn't just for fun. And although we do have fun, we never lose sight of our goal. Right here, right now, we are on a mission. So, you know, in 1656, Spain was struggling. Their empire was waffling a little bit, and King Philip, you know, was sort of the president of the world back then, if you will, and he was, he was ailing in health and he was ailing in, uh, financially. And so he ordered the biggest treasure fleet ever to leave the New World, part of which the Maravilla was, there was 14 ships. And he had made a, a deal, I believe, with the Bishop of Spain that he was trying to buy his way into heaven and was gonna donate a life-size statue of Madonna, let's call it five feet back then, holding baby Jesus, made out of solid gold, rimmed, you know, with emeralds and diamonds. And that piece is mythical, but I am a true believer in that piece and, and I believe that we're close sank in uh, the 1600s, 17th century, 1656, and a lot of these ships went down in hurricanes. It did, this one went down in sort of a northeaster, but it actually collided with the lead ship, the Maravilla, in the early part of January, 1656, broke in half. One section sunk there, according to the story, and one section bobbled off into the abyss somewhere. We don't know where it is, but we've been following this debris field. We do believe, similar to the Atocha, that there is a main pile or there is a mother load, as they like to say in, in Hollywood, and we're close to it. We're, we, we're finding some absolutely incredible artifacts. Okay, so uh, we, uh, we got a brief weather window and uh, we steamed over from uh, walkers and uh, we're here this morning and uh, we're gonna it looks like the whole day is getting better and better as the day goes along so uh, mr. and uh, mrs. are gonna be diving this afternoon and uh, divers are rolling out right now to go check out the sites Radio check access. Loud and clear, loud and clear. Copy. Have you heard anything from him earlier, Captain? No, I have not heard anything. I've not heard anything. I heard about 16 uh, coins. I was actually just looking at the radio because I was trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Yeah, we got something going here. We'll let you know. Right, right. You guys found anything yet here? Come on, we'll. What? Will found two emeralds already. Two emeralds. Yeah. Oh, right. Good job, bro. That's the way to start. We yeah. can just get out here. My God. Yeah, we've got three holes down today. Uh, two emeralds in the books. One amethyst. Found some onion glass. We found a lot of ballast stones, a lot of spikes, a lot of pottery. Just shards and pieces all broken up. 
So, it's turned out to be a good day. Exciting. <laughs> we are out here on the site. And the one thing about the Maravilla, she sank in a very difficult place. Uh, very susceptible to the weather and kind of got to me last night and went out on the deck and thought about it and realized that, hey, we got to do this right and do it professionally. And, and we're already on the two emeralds and amethyst and uh, a few little artifacts that we found. So I'm hoping we're going to get one good day out here today. So it's important that uh, you know we, we get on some stuff. The weather's supposed to be brutal here, like about midnight, so we're going to pull out, just get, just be done with it. And then it's supposed to blow again all freaking week. So we'll go back, uh, do what we can. We're sending people out on recon missions to different places that people are telling us about. But this is where I want to be. We've got about uh, T minus five hours. I think we've got about 15 divers in the water. Why don't we uh, get in the water? Let's go. on it and there we are. Found my first emerald of the season. It's really nice. I'm guessing maybe three carats and it's got a beautiful dark color. Those are the ones we're after. The dark ones. Uh, it's gorgeous. I'm stoked. <laughs> So we've dug about, I think, 10 holes today, give or take. Uh, we've got three emeralds in the bank so far. I've got two and Robbie's got one, so it kind of makes it a fun competition to who can find more, so it's kind of, it's game on right now. I just found a piece of china that's got an actual picture of like a warrior. You can see a sword on there, so it's kind of cool to find something with a, a partial picture at least on there. Hopefully we can find some more pieces of it and put some more of the picture together. A couple more dives tonight. Had a fantastic day. It'd be nice if we could pull up a few more pieces of treasure before we end it. But I can't complain, people have been fighting weather since this ship sank out here. And you can get the equipment, you can get the people, the government on your side. And then Mother Nature says, not so fast. This has been a terrific, terrific day. I think we're up to five emeralds. We've got three amethysts um, and then some incredible artifacts. Uh, we've had some pretty neat pottery come in today. This is a piece that I found. You can see these real neat uh, leads to it. Uh, this was probably a really neat little pot like that, if you can imagine, some kind of maybe a wine jug. And then I get really excited when I see this. It's not very exciting, but, but that is a piece of wood from the Nuestra Senora de la Maravilla. Oh, somebody's coming up. Got an emerald. Oh, yeah. my God. I got a big old pair of this. What? Juliet, wait you see it. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful. How big's the emerald? It's an emerald. Pretty good size. You got it? Yeah. OK, emerald coming up. Here we go. We got to get this on film. Looks to be maybe um, two carat. But you can see the growth on there. That's important because that tells us the story of, of age. We can prove that this piece was down on the bottom of the ocean for 365 years with that growth on there. But you can see it's an uncut emerald, so very exciting. Congratulations, sir. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. That's two today, Robbie. Let's see it. Jules, how big was it? My I God. Think I made your props. Jeez, I got to see it. I can't wait to show it to you. You got it. Oh, jeez. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Oh, like Jesus. Years. Jules, that is a rock. Look at the color in there. That is spectacular. Jesus. Typically, when you talk to the archaeologists, this stone did not come from Colombia. They you don't really occur there. 
very strange that on this ship, the Maravilla, we're, we're up to about 50 of these. These come from Brazil. And so you say to yourself, you know, my God, if you could track the history of this thing, uh, it came, had to come over land all that way, you know, up, up through the mountains, ox carted in, dropped off somewhere in Cartagena, put on a ship, sunk once, okay, reloaded onto the Maravilla, comes up to here and sinks again in January of 1656. So as, as big as the ocean is, I'm always amazed how fast the world is and we're able to go down and find something this small. I mean, look at that. A day like this for these guys to come out here in one day it's like you know if we had the weather you just can only imagine what we could find out here in a week or 10 days or whatever but it, it really tells me that we're on the right spot um, I went and met with Bob Marks coming up on five years ago who put me on this spot and said that you know keep following the debris just keep following the debris we're, do we're doing excellent uh, chart work doing excellent mathematics with uh, where the holes are, what we brought up in each hole, so we're kind of, you know, following this debris field and what's what, and it should start telling us a story that somewhere very close to here is some kind of mother load, some kind of main pile, to just stab in the dark here and, and stick our nose out here in a, in a real short window of, of diving. I am very pleased uh, with the, today's finds. Let me tell you a story about a young man with a dream. A dream of sailing the sea, living life with the ones he loves. Discovering all the world has to offer. A dream of exploration. Fate brought this team together, and passion fuels a common goal. The curiosity of what lies beneath the Bahama Banks is what drives this team every day.
right here, right now, we are on a mission. <laughs> 